In any given moment, you're either working in a way that's working or not. And every single one of you who's watching this video, you can develop the capacity to work in a way that works for you more of the time. And that's about working wisely. So I'm Allison Miller. I am the founder of the Academic Writers Space. It's a pandemic invention. It is a virtual co-working community for academic researchers and writers. And we've been doing it for a little over two years. And we have an amazing community where we co-work together all week long. And every week we have a new theme. So for all of you in our community, and even if you're not in our community, these, this is really important. Our theme this week is wisdom. Wisdom is the integration of knowledge, of experience, of understanding, of also having a tolerance for the, you know, the uncertainty in life. And all of us actually have wisdom inside of us, but we're not necessarily in contact with it. So here are things, some things I'm suggesting to all of you this week, if you're coming to our writing retreats, our co-working sessions, and of course, as always, this is something that you can practice on your own. So some things to think about when it comes to cultivating wisdom, working in a way that really works for you, that feels wise, is first of all, remember there's no absolutes. There isn't a singular right way to be an academic researcher and writer. There isn't a singular right way to write a lit review or even to run statistical analysis. There's always differences in how we go about doing things. Instead of focusing on the absolute or believing that you need to do something the right way, instead you can focus on what's the next right thing right now? What's wise now? Where we're letting go of how are we going to, for example, finish a dissertation in its totality, you have no idea how you're going to do that. But you can begin to connect with an inner sense of wisdom, an inner sense of guidance of what's the next right thing. A key way to accomplish that is to get quiet. So if you've ever been somewhere after a snowfall, there's this quality of quiet. It's so peaceful. It's a very special way that it can sound when you walk outside after a snowfall. In a sense, that's what I'm talking about cultivating. Moments where we step out of all of the doing and we let ourselves get just quiet inside, slowing down the thinking and the rushing and the hustling and the doing and just noticing, dropping your eyes inside. How am I right now? What's going on with me right now? What condition am I in? How do I find myself? There's a version of you that's present in the moment. What is that? We're getting quiet and being curious and noticing who is here. And then we can take our eyes and look outside. What needs to be done? What's going on in the outside world? How can I move forward into my work given the condition that I'm in and given the task at hand so that we can move into our work connected to ourselves, acting with wisdom rather than just being reactive and doing whatever our mind, whatever thought comes to our mind. We're stopping, we're dropping in, we're connecting to our hearts, to our bodies. What feels wise? It's also really important that you pay attention to your pace. If you're hustling and moving really quickly, it's hard for wisdom to, to catch up with you, to visit you. So wisdom arises in a sense more out of a slow cooker than out of a pressure cooker. And I think it's so important that you pay attention to your physical environment. If your physical environment is full of distractions, you're gonna end up in a situation where your attention will be wandering all over the place. And we can't connect with wisdom when our attention is divided. We need more unified attention, dropping in how am I and what am I actually trying to do. And finally, trust. Wisdom in many ways is about trusting. It's about trusting what your body is telling you. Starting to notice that your body is always speaking to you and telling you if the way that you're working is working for you or not. And when we slow down and we quiet down and we begin to listen, we become more fluent in the language of the body and how it is 
constantly informing us in the form of sensation and also our thoughts inform us. We can notice, oh, I'm really getting into some negative, you know, inter internal dialogue right now. Oh, I must not be working in a way that's working for me because when I'm working in a way that's working for me, my inner critic isn't the boss of me. So learning to trust that your body in the form of sensation and where your thinking is going, it's a constant feedback loop telling you if you're working in a way that's wise or not. And if you find yourself working in a way that's not wise, that's normal. You're normal. Everyone, everyone on earth works on, moves through life and does things that aren't actually working for them. That's okay. Can you recognize it? And can you learn to make wise, even teeny tiny baby step shifts that help you move in a direction that actually works for you. I believe you can do that. So I wanna invite you, if you've never come and to the Academic Writer Space, we call it TAWS for short. If you've never come and experienced what can happen when you co-work with others and you co-regulate with others, what can happen to your productivity, to your focus, to your concentration, and also really to you actually just feeling better in the process, will come and co-work with us. Anybody can sign up for a free week of membership. In that week, we have 22 writing retreats and two planning sessions, and you can go to as many of the sessions as you like. I'll be absolutely honored and delighted to co-work with you and to all of you in our TOS community. I'm looking forward to being wise together. All right, see you soon. Thanks, everyone.